Hello guys, today we are going to cover programs related to threads. So we will discuss two questions. The first question is to write a program to create two threads named T1 and T2. The thread T1 will create a file named thread.txt and the thread T2 will write hello its T2 into that particular file. So I have included the header files. Now declare the prototype for the thread function. So since there are going to be two threads, so let's write here T1 function and for the second thread we'll use T2 underscore FUN. So for each thread that you create you need to define the functions because whatever the thread is supposed to do will be written within the function. Now let's start with the main function. Since I need to create two threads, so I need two variables of the type p thread underscore t. So let's name them t1 and t2. So let's create the first thread. So p thread underscore create p1. Second parameter is null because we are not going to change the default parameters for the thread. Then the name of the function t1 underscore fun. And since we are not going to pass anything, so the fourth parameter will also be null. So next is we need to wait for the thread to finish. So p thread underscore join. Remember this is to wait for the thread to finish. Which thread? t1 since it is not going to return anything so i'm going to use null now what is the first thread supposed to do that we need to write in the function so t1 underscore fun void star arguments so what this function is going to do is it is supposed to this thread is supposed to create a file so we know that for that we require the open system call file name was thread.txt o underscore create and permissions since we need to use open so we require to include sys types and sys stat and finally fcn pl.h so this function will create the file fine we can close it also after creating file descriptor ft so let's take this here ft should be an integer fine so this integer we can also define in the main function because this we can use in both the threads. So we can do like this. Alright, so this is the first fun first thread. Now we need to create a second thread also. Now most of the times you might create both the threads back to back. So I will show you what will be the difference. What you should do is you should allow the first thread to finish and then create the second thread and t2 null t2 underscore fun again null so exactly same whatever we have done with the first thread we are going to do the same with the second also and now define the function for the second thread t2 underscore fun void star arg now what this is supposed to do again open the file thread dot txt write only so you can use read write or write only mode now write 
इंटू एफ टी हेलो इट्स टी टू सो टोटल ऑफ ट्वेल्व करेक्टर्स दैट्स इट सेव इट कंपाइल इट टू वन डॉट सी माइनस एल पी थ्रेड ओके सो वी आर गेटिंग द एरर फॉर द वेरिएबल एफ टी सो आई शुड नॉट ट्राइट इट हेयर नॉट इन साइड मेन ग्लोबल वेरिएबल इज रिक्वायर्ड फाइन रन द प्रोग्राम नाउ लेट सी वॉट इज देयर इन द फाइल लेट चेक फर्स्ट फाइन द फाइल इज क्रिएटेड थ्रेड डॉट टी एक्स टी इफ आई चेक द कंटेंट्स सो यू कैन सी हेलो इट्स टी टू सो दिस इज डन एग्जैक्टली एज बाय द एज पर द क्वेश्चन नाउ वट वी कैन डू हेयर इज डू लिटल मोर मॉडिफिकेशन so that it is more readable so the first thread after creating the file let's say it prints thread dot txt file created by t1 so that it is clear to the user while running the program that what is happening at each step similarly after doing this printf data written by t2 again compile it so you can write any such statements which make it clear to the evaluator that what you are doing at each step right so again you can check the contents of thread.txt hello it's t2 now one thing that i wanted to show is if you don't do it like this so if you write the join statement after creating both the threads so like this now if i compile and run it so you see if i run multiple times the order is not the same so what is happening is since you are creating the threads back to back both the threads the order is not defined so t2 can run first and then t1 so it might result in a different kind of an output now let's do one thing so let's wait for the user so let's not take the defined input here let's take the input from the user read from the user into buffer 100 characters save it here in n so this we can define here locally also int n and character buffer this i am showing you just to show that the order of this matters okay and write into ft from the buffer okay save it compile now if you run this so you see that thread1 file created by t1 okay now it is waiting for the user to type in the content typing the data fine data written okay let us check thread.txt so you can see that it is not updated but now if i redo this as earlier so i should wait for the first thread to finish and then only the second thread should be created again recompile run this writing again some data now check again red dot txt and you can see here writing again so it's not writing the entire data let me check why okay because i have used here 
I should have written n. So recompile, run it. Hello, this is Brix Tutor. Check the content of the file thread.txt and you can see hello this is Dex tutor so the important point to remember here is that first create first thread wait for this to finish and then only create the second one so the order is important question number two is write a program to create a thread t1 the main process passes two numbers to t1 so the thread is supposed to calculate the sum of those numbers and return the sum back to the parent process for printing okay so the parent will pass two numbers to the thread the thread will calculate the sum and then return back the sum for the parent to print it so this is the entire code so let me explain this now all the header files then the function declaration now i need to pass two numbers so for that i have taken an array I have predefined the numbers you can even take the input from the user you can scanf you can use the scanf function for this or you can directly pass also then the sum integer is to calculate the sum result is to store the sum that is returned by the thread to the main function since I am going to create only one thread so we need a variable of the type pthread underscore then you create the thread using pthread underscore create name of the thread second parameter is null then the function name and last is you pass now the array i am not going to pass one single value that's why i have taken array because i need to pass both the input numbers pthread underscore join for which thread you need to wait a underscore thread now since the thread is going to return something i will save that returned value into the variable result next i have used to printf inside main process and the second printf is to print the sum so why i have used this so that it is converted back into the integer because the result if you see the data type here is void but the sum that it is going to calculate is of is a integer data so i am going to type cast it into integer here now what will happen inside the function so whatever numbers are passed from the main process to the thread that will be saved here in arg so actually it is the array that will be passed so what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the sum of both those numbers that are passed inside the array so the two numbers will be at the zero index and at the first index so the value received from the parent process is signed into x so that's why x 0 and x 1 so whatever is at the 0th index and at the first index is going to be added and the result is going to be stored in sum next use pthread underscore exit to return the sum and typecast into void why hey, void because the pthread underscore join function the second parameter is of the type void so i need to typecast here and then again to print it as an integer i need to typecast it once again while printing the value of the sum okay compile it run it so you can see here inside thread inside main process sum is 8 so the thread only printed this inside thread and the rest two statements are printed from the main process so if you change the values here just to cross check 5 and 5 so the answer should be 10 this time compile run and you can see that the sum is 10 so there are two important points that you should note one you should pass the values as an array here second this particular calculation 
these two things are important okay how to calculate the sum and then also how to return it using p underscore exit here you need to typecast into void and then while printing it again typecast into int so these are the two three main points that you are required to focus upon so in the next lecture we are going to discuss programs related to process synchronization